Imagine having a personalized email assistant that not only organizes your inbox into different folders, but also drafts replies tailored to your tone of voice. So it understands your services that you offer, your pricing, and even knows what you say based on previous email conversations. Let's jump in and I'll show you exactly how I've made this AI automation step by step. So in order to make this automation, all we're going to need is a couple of tools. So there's make.com. This is what houses the, the different modules for the connections between each tool. We're going to need an OpenAI account to use the API key so that we can send data to OpenAI. And then we can make decisions about what the email can be categorized as. And also we can store our data in there in terms of what we normally respond as. So we're going to add a vector store, which is how we usually respond to emails. So as you can see, the first step I'll do is just explain flow and it's going to show you what happens. So typically a watch for emails coming into your Gmail. It's then going to send this to OpenAI to say, what category is this email? For me and myself, I've done this for my SEO business. So I, I do SEO freelancing. I've got an SEO business uh, offering <coughs> SEO services. So I regularly get the same sort of emails coming through and I've put them down into five, I think five or six different categories. We've got sales outreach. So this is when somebody's reaching out to me trying to sell their services. Uh, it's quite common to be honest. It's probably most of the emails are these ones. We've got link building. So this is people trying to sell links. So they'll, they'll say, do you want to add a link on their site? Or they may ask if, if we accept links on our site. Potential lead is obviously the most important one. So this is going to be if somebody has expressed an interest in SEO services or web design, and yeah, it's going to categorize it down this route and then go through the steps to draft that email response. We've also got partnerships. So sometimes we'll get people, maybe a web design agency who doesn't offer SEO services. They'll reach out and say, would you like to do a par partnership? So if they have SEO leads, they can send us to us. And if we, have, we have web design leads that we can't service and then we'll send them to them. Uh, lastly, we've just got these two here that are actually sort of dead ends. So this is no response needed. So I think in the first instance, we've got miscellaneous. So this is anything else that doesn't fall into these categories. And then we might also have newsletter as well. So that's if we've signed up to newsletters coming through to the company email address. Typically, it'd be my personal email address. So we don't get many of these. But if we do, then it's going to go down this route and it'll know not to respond. So let's first of all have a look at this first module. So we've got the Gmail here. And this is Fairly straightforward to connect if you're going to be connecting with a Google Workspace account. You can literally just authorize the connection here and you're going to click add and then it will prompt you to log in with your Google account. If you do have a personal Gmail account, then there is an extra step that you'll need to take. So I do have another video on this on my YouTube if, if you wanted to find out. That's a step step by step guide on how to do that. But for the purposes of this, I, I will cover that obviously it's already covered in another video so we can look at that there so in this example you're going to connect to your google account you're going to select simple filter only unread emails and one one per time so when you're testing this you can set it to just basically select one email and keep testing from that and that's what i've done in in i think in this example it's actually waiting for new responses so once once we get a new email coming through once it's turned on it's going to pick up that email that's come through. It's going to send the body of that email through to ChatGPT. And then we're going to say to ChatGPT, we've got these instructions here. So we're going to create a completion. The system prompt is you're a helpful, accurate email assistant who categorizes emails based on the content within them. There are five main types of email that you'll encounter. So I've given it sales outreach. And I've explained what this is. This is characterized as someone reaching out to us in order for us, for us to become a client of theirs. So this might look like, and then I've actually found an example from a previous email, popped it in there. So it's it's really granular in terms of what, it, what it's looking at. It knows exactly what I categorize as that. Um, and then we go down, we've got the next thing for link building. This is somebody emailing us asking if we want to buy back links or guest posts on their sites and we get a lot of these. These Typically, we can just put them into the bin. We don't have to respond to those. 
potential lead, obviously the most important one. So when somebody's showing an interest in our services, whether that's SEO or web design, how our services work, availability, or what's our prices, this might look, look like this. So we've got an example here, somebody reaching out, asking for Shopify SEO services, lastly, partnership, yeah, fairly self-explanatory, and then newsletter and miscellaneous. So we've then also got here, so this is just the message that's going to actually prompt the AI to give an output. So this first one is just sort of setting the scene. So it's giving it a system prompt and this user prompt is actually the main part of the specific prompt that's going to go through. So it's asking it, categorize the following email. Here's the subject line and here's the email content. And I've just selected these here. These are all of the options that you get with Gmail. So yeah, there might be a couple more things you could include, but obviously the subject line and the text content is all you're going to need really. And it's doing this within the context of the user prompt. So if I'd just done this on its own without the use, without the system prompt, sorry, it wouldn't make much sense. It, it wouldn't know what I'm asking it to do. So other than to categorize the email. So in this sense, it knows that it's categorizing it based on the system prompt. So this will then go through to a router. This is based on the output of this. So I think also in the system prompt, it will say only give your one word as an answer. I don't want it to say based on the input, I'm going to categorize it as this. We don't want any of that. So I think within there, it should say somewhere that we're going to actually, yeah. So you strictly only output the email category without any other words. So when we run this, it should come out with just one of those five or six words. And then this is when the router will, will send this information off to the correct route. So if we've just had an email come through, it's categorized as a potential lead. It's going to come to the router. The data within this will just be the word potential lead, which then means it gets filtered down this route here. So what this is here is another Gmail um, module. But this one here is actually going to modify the email label. So you can see I need to verify the re-verify the connection here. Uh, I won't do this on this video because it's just it's another five minutes or so to do that, but it's it's fairly quick. But basically this just has the labels in there, and you're going to select potential lead. I've already set up my labels in my email inbox, so that's probably the first step you'd like to do is just think about what emails do you typically get and how can they be categorized? Is it product FAQ? Is it an order tracking issue? Obviously, depending on your business, is it a, a lead, a referral and so on? And you can categorize them in your Google Mail inbox in your labels section. And that's what you're going to be able to select when you come to here. So this here should match what you've got in Gmail. Just makes it nice and easy to categorize and know that it's going to the right label. So this one here is going to add that label. So that email that's just come in, AI has looked at it, decided what it should be categorized as, and then it's moved it to the correct folder, which is very handy. It sort of does that, that for you without having to have set filters based on keywords and stuff, which can be handy, but obviously having that extra knowledge from the AI to know exactly what the context of the email is, is going to make it much more accurate in knowing which filter it should go to. So the next module I've got here is the email assistant. So what I've done in OpenAI is actually I've created a specific assistant. So you, you can just send this to the generic GPT-4, but I've created an email responder assistant within OpenAI in here. It's basically got more information on me and myself and how I write emails. So it's gonna be more to me when it's writing these responses. So within here, I've got this prompt of uh, your helpful, accurate email assistant who writes email responses to emails that will be provided. So it's James Johnson, that's me. UK grammar, so obviously it's going to try and do US mostly. And I want it to format it in HTML. That's the easiest sort of way to format the output. I'm even showing it an example of how I'd like it to be. So just starting here and there with the end HTML tag. And I've also got it to append my Gmail signature as well. So there might be another way to do this. I think you could probably, within Make, you could add a module that's just going to add this. It's going to append it to the 
email that's generated by ChatGPT, but I found that actually it's, it's worked quite well. So I've just copied the HTML from my email signature, pasted it in here, and it seems to pick it up pretty good. So one extra step that we do have in here that's going to make it just that next step better. So typically, if I was to just set this up as it is and let it run, it would sound like chat gpt essentially it would it would sound like it's ai generated so what i've got here is i've set up a vector store with a file search and all this vector store is is more information and more context on how i write emails so all i've done is i'd set up a google word document with a bunch of email responses and replies and um, email feeds from myself and previous inquiries that i've had so within that, there's things like people asking pricing, asking how my services work, what services I offer, and then there's me writing in my own tone with the with the answers to that. So this is what's going to be really useful when it's trying to write the response to the email. It's using this as context. It knows to search this file, to search this vector database, to then know with that extra context what you would normally sound like when you respond. So just to give you an example of this, this is the sort of output that it's come with. So I'd got, well, I'd sent myself a, a fake inquiry, essentially. And this is within my drafts. So what it's done, it's saying, hi, Joe, thank you for reaching out for the regarding the new website for your gardening services in Skipton. We're delighted to help. Here's an overview of the process and what you can expect. So it's actually given the, it's broken down the process based off what I've said in previous emails in a long-winded way. Usually I'd write it as paragraphs but it's it's kind of chunked it out quite nicely and made it easier to read and then it's even got pricing on there as well so it's picked up from my previous responses to to website build inquiries that it knows exactly you know how much i charge based off different types of websites and what you can do is you can set this up so that it's in your drafts that's personally how i like to do it so i can come into my drafts and all of my emails that have come in have already been categorized into the right section and they've already got drafts ready to go. So all I need to do now in my email inbox is just go to my draft section, check what it's written against what's come in, just make the odd tweaks here or there, change the price. You know, you can add a bit of human tone if you like, if it is sounding a bit robotic, but I have found that because it's learnt how I respond, it's generally very accurate. It's like 90% of the way there. So it's, it's massively saving me uh, well hours hours and hours per week just having to do this now uh, whereas before i had done it manually and this is something that can be done in any business like what business doesn't use an email address i can't think of any so it's obviously something that's going to be really useful for a lot of people so i just thought it'd be worth sharing and yeah it's fairly straightforward to set up it's just a case of picking what your labels will be within gmail so you see how i've got form submissions, link building, miscellaneous, newsletters, partnerships, potential leads, and sales outreach to download. So I don't actually use all of those in the automation. But once you've got those set up, that's it. You're just going to pick what your labels, what you want it to categorize them as. You're going to tell the module here. You're going to give it the context of what you would like it to categorize as, and you're going to tell it just to do the one word output. And because of that, it's going to filter through the router to the correct route. And then the message here the actual creation of your message is going to the assistant as opposed to the generic response so this is how you can make sure that it's going to sound like you and what we do here is just you know it says create a draft so you could say send an email which you could do for full automation but i think actually it's a lot safer just to look, just to go in each day and just check what it's written and and you can approve it and send it off. So yeah, I, I hope that's been helpful. I think it's something that's going to be very useful for a lot of businesses, for small business owners, maybe for coaches and stuff as well. So I think if you're interested in this sort of automation, if you find it interesting like I do, uh, you're looking to learn more, then I do have a school community where I'm just sharing this sort of information for free, and building courses out and stuff just to help people learn it as well because i found it really interesting so yeah i hope you found that useful and thank you for watching i'll see you next time